Hello and happy Monday everyone. I'm Carly. This is Zoo to You Virtual Safari. It is Monday and we are in the great apes habitat of Primate Panorama talking about orangutans. It is a very special week that we're honoring this week. It's Endangered Species Week. So we're going to be highlighting species that really need our help and how you can be a part of that help. So we're really excited to feature orangutans today with keepers Cindy and Tenley. They're going to answer your questions about our family troop, but also about how you can help orangutans just through some actions on your own at home. So it's a really important day to kick off a really important week and we're really glad you all are here. Good morning, Mindy. Uh, I hope everyone who celebrated Mother's Day had a nice Sunday. Let me know what you did in the comments if you celebrated with your kids or your mom. I'd love to hear it. We're so happy that you could join us for another week of virtual safaris. So let's get started. Here's Cindy and Tenley. They'll be answering your questions. Oh, thank you so much for the donation, Tyler. Um, and we are in the day room of our great apes habitat. Um, and we are featuring our family today, aren't we? Said, what? Aren't, who are we featuring today? <laughs> oh, it's uh, Barani, Nias, Chara, and Hesti. All right, our family of four. And they're having a great time in here. Explain why there's so much to climb on here. What does this species really like to do? Um, orangutans are arboreal, meaning that they live in trees. They very rarely come down to the ground. Uh, so we try to provide as much 3D areas as we possibly can so that we utilize the space a little bit better for how orangutans move and live. <laughs> And we can see Chara there, our two-year-old in the back. She is so precious, so independent. Where else is everyone else? Is that? That's Nias over there. Mom Nias is over there. Chara's with Barani, mm -hmm. her dad. And then Hestie's over there. Hestie, our little star. Um, hi, Wendy. Yes, they do have a ton of space outside. Um, if you're in Colorado and you're in Denver specifically today, you know it's kind of a gross day. It's cold. It's rainy. And that is not their favorite weather, is it? No, you would think living in a rainforest that they would love rain, um, but I guess when you have the option to get uh, inside and away from the rain, that you choose that. But they, they can go outside today. In fact, they've been out uh, a lot this morning. Um, in fact, in, in the rainforest, they have um, orangutans naturally use big giant leaves to cover themselves or make a tent um, above their nests to build so that they're safe from the rain. So yeah, they're just inside for a little bit right now so we can talk about them, but they have plenty of outdoor space, which they've really been enjoying as we've had some really nice weather. Uh, Lori's wondering how much they weigh and what their lifespan is. Uh, so uh, orangutans are sexually dimorphic and that means that they're very different. So females are about half the weight of a male. Uh, they tend to be from 100 to 140 pounds and males tend to be around 250 to 300 pounds. Oh wow. Hi Stephanie. We do still have Irina. She's in the other half of the habitat with her friend Jaya. So we have some keepers eating lunch over there so <laughs> we'll let them enjoy in peace. But yes we do still have Irina and Jaya. Hi Lala. She loves the orangutans. Um, so Luke has a great question which can get us into the reason why we're talking about this species today. Are they endangered? What is their conservation status? Uh, orangutans are actually critically endangered. Um, the Sumatran orangutan, I think there's about, uh, the estimates around 14,000. They recently discovered a new species of orangutan called the Tapanuli orangutan. And there's between, there are about between 600 and 800 orangutans, so they're the most I think endangered of all the apes right now. And then there's also the Bornean orangutans and they have quite a bit more. It's, a, it's like 140,000, but they're still also considered critically endangered. What is the number one reason why they are critically endangered? It's habitat loss. So uh, currently um, for orangutans, most of the habitat loss is due to uh, oil palm plantations and it produces palm oil, which is in almost every product from shampoos to cosmetics to foods, um, all kinds of things. And so um, the great thing about palm oil, if I can say great, 
is um, that it's a very, very uh, efficient oil. So compared to all the other kinds of oils, that are, it's um, produces the most and the least amount of land. So it's a very complex issue because the world still needs so much oil and palm oil is efficient. And so it is something that we need because if you try a different oil, it uses more land. So more animals would be in danger, but um, it also needs to be sustainable. So you can't just keep cutting down the forest to create more um, oil palm plantations. Absolutely. And Tenley, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you have helped orangutans in the wild? Yeah, so last year I actually got to fly to Borneo, um, and this was a project completely funded by Denver Zoo. Uh, so they had me fly out to Borneo, and I worked with this amazing organization called Ape Malaysia. And what we did there is there was actually a palm oil plantation right along the river. And because of the devastation to orangutans and clouded leopards and all the other animals that live in that area, this palm oil plantation actually gave back their land to be replanted. So I spent about two weeks in the rainforest planting trees um, and over three days we planted about 590 trees. So Stephanie is from the same area of Germany Irina came to us from. So Irina is really showing off here right at the window enjoying some lunch. There's Katie from our last slide. Um, so here's Irina for all those Irina fans out there. There you go. And Jai is probably somewhere up high. Um, he might be on the platform. He's under a oh, he's, he's under a oh, blanket. He's under, up there under a blanket looking out the window. Oh. <laughs> Oh, Jaya. <laughs> so this is Irina. So I'm um, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Tenley. Why don't you mm -hmm. keep telling us about that? Yeah, so I helped this organization as well as some other keepers from two different other zoos here in the U.S. And we planted these trees. And right now the trees are pretty small, but in about 10 years, um, they are hoping that this is going to connect those empty corridors and really help orangutans be able to travel um, it's really important for orangutans to travel along the river to get different food sources depending on when the trees are fruiting. All right. Well, thank you so much for that. And that's something that Denver Zoo uh, facilitated. Correct? Yeah. And we were actually going to send two other keepers this year to participate in the same project. Denver Zoo loves this program and it loves helping orangutans in the wild. Um, and unfortunately, right now, those keepers cannot go. Um, but we are hopeful that Denver Zoo will keep helping orangutans in the wild by supporting that project. So let's talk about how people at home, the ones who are watching this live stream right now, what they can do to support orangutans um, just through their own kind of purchasing habits. Yeah, so it's actually pretty easy. Um, all of you can help support and save orangutans. Um, as Cindy was talking about, there's sustainable palm oil. Um, so the best thing you can do is purchase products that contain sustainable palm oil. Now you might be thinking, well, how do I know which is sustainable, what's not sustainable? Um, luckily, another local zoo, Shia Mountain Zoo, has put together this amazing phone app. Um, and the app, you can search different products. Um, it's super easy and user-friendly. On the app, you can type in a product. So let's say you want to look up Cheez-Its. Is Cheez-Its good for orangutans? You will type in Cheez-Its in the app and it will give you a rating if that's a good company or not. So it's very easy to use this app and just make some smarter, more sustainable choices in your purchasing. And you can help this very important species that we love to take care of here so much. So let's go back over to our family unit. We have a lot of questions coming in. Uh, thanks everyone for being patient while we talked about some of the reasons we're featuring orangutans today, which is their conservation status because it's Endangered Species Week and we really want to bring attention to the animals and species that really need our help and by extension your help. So let's see, we have some questions about uh, maternal gestation, how many can they have at one time, and how long are they pregnant? Um, so part of the problem with the orangutan population um, declining so rapidly is that Orangutans have the longest birth interval of any mammal. It's, for Sumatran orangutans, it's between eight and nine years before they'll have another baby. Their gestation is about eight and a half weeks, so it's 35 weeks instead of 40 weeks. Versus weeks or months? Weeks. Okay. 35 weeks versus 40 weeks in a human. And um, they will not have another baby for about eight or nine years. Um, they 
have such a complex food source that it takes years for the kids to learn how to be on their own. So they need to learn where in the forest, how high in the forest, what time of year in the forest, um, what foods they can eat, what they can't eat. It's extremely complicated, so it takes a long time for them to raise their babies. Um, and typically, by the time they have the next baby, um, like Kesty, who's still here, will hang around and still continue to learn. Um, being a mom is not instinctual for orangutans, it's learned. So nursing is learned, and I'm sure all of you moms out there that have breastfed your child, it is hard. And so uh, it's best for them to stay around and learn more from their moms. That's a great question. Crystal's running is Cindy there. She said to try working with all the animals because now she can't decide which one's her favorite. Uh, Barbara has a question for Tenley. She says, did you see any orangutans in Borneo while you were there? Yeah, so we did see a couple. Um, unfortunately, I kind of went at a not great time. About a month before I went, they just had a massive fruiting. And so that would have been the perfect time to go. So all the orangutans flooded along the river to eat all this fruit. And then by the time I got there, all the fruit was gone. So a lot of the orangutans had left um, to go look for other fruit. But the wildlife there is pretty incredible, even though the numbers have dwindled. Um, we saw gibbons, we saw elephants, um, tons of different other smaller monkeys. Uh, it's an incredible place to visit. Very cool. That was a great question, Barbara. Thank you. Uh, Owen's wondering what they're eating, what they're snacking on. Uh, right now they're eating lettuce, I think <laughs> you can see. Uh, orangutans are frugivores, meaning they eat fruit in the wild, but the fruit that they eat in the wild is very different than fruit we know. It's much more fibrous and tough. Um, and so we feed them more vegetables and leaves and browse, which are um, actual trees that we import from Florida and Arizona in the winter um, because that has the fiber and nutrition that they need. Very good. Sheila's wondering, are they unable to get pregnant during that eight or nine year span or is it just they instinctually try not to? They can't get pregnant. Um, the, uh, sorry, the wild, <laughs> uh, in the wild where they are, it's got, um, as Tony was talking about, fruiting seasons and so during the every, there's not always food available. So during that time, they're they have a heart, they have less nutrition. And um, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that once it starts fruiting, that tends to be when there's more babies born. Um, so I think between what they eat and the fruit cycles and the hormones that they have, because their babies do nurse for that whole time, help uh, keep them from getting pregnant. We just watched Chara climb all the way up there. And I'm just imagining any other two-year-old, what a mom would do if they just got, you know, 20 to 30 feet in the air. Um, Reagan is nine. They want to know why they have much longer arms than legs. Well, Reagan, what do you think? Do you think it's because if you watch Hesty up there, if you're living up high in a tree, you're mostly using your arms. Whereas if you look at gorillas, uh, they're terrestrial and live on the ground, and so they have uh, longer legs. But for orangutans, they need their arms more than they need their legs for climbing. So we can get a little closer look up here of Barani, our dad, to Chera. Um, hello, Carly. We are just scanning back to get more of those questions. Oliver's five. He wants to know why they have that reddish-brown fur hair. <laughs> Believe it or not, it actually helps camouflage them in the forest. If you're looking up high and the sun is dappling down through the leaves, it, they actually blend in really well um, with what would look like sunlight. Sunlight. Uh, Lori wants to know what their lifespan is. They can live um, between, usually into their 50s. I think 50s would be like our, I don't know, our 100 year old. <laughs> uh, uh, people. There has been like one case that's gotten up to 60 and I would definitely equivalent to whatever our record holder for humans is like 115 or mm -hmm. something like that. But 40s and 50s, the males don't live as long. I think it's kind of similar to what people are. Um, the females tend to live longer than the males. Uh, Lydia's five. She's wondering if they have any predators. 
Sumatran orangutans do. They have Sumatran tigers, and so that's part of why they do stay up high and tend not to go down to the ground, because it's safer up there. So what is Barani kind of enjoying here? It looks like some enrichment maybe filled with food. Frozen food, yeah. So it's a, a plastic that we've drilled out, and then we freeze stuff inside of it, and it makes it um, more challenging. Sometimes they'll use the tools to get the food out, or they'll bang it on the ground. Um, hi there, Lisa. Lisa is my neighbor from growing up. She's watching. <laughs> um, Christina's wondering what the ages of our orangutans are. Barani is 27. Nias is 31. Baby Chara just turned two. And Hesty will be 10 in June. Someone says they remember Robin and Sally. Oh, I love Robin and Sally. I miss them dearly. <laughs> so we have some really longtime fans here, and we are so so happy that you all are joining us on these virtual safaris. Um, let's see. This is, looks very similar to what um, the keepers were doing with Jelani last week. They put kind of pumpkin in the drilled out plastic holes. So primates really do love kind of having to work for that food, mm -hmm. don't they? Yeah. What other enrichment do we have in here? I mean, for a lot of people, it we might look some, like a messy playroom, but it's all We have some magazines with <laughs> applesauce frozen inside of it. Um, we've also done a forage, so sunflower seeds are sprinkled around um, that they have to dig through, like their wood wool. Uh, they also have some frozen juice bottles in there, blankets, toys, <laughs> pools, little chairs. Um, Lala's nine, she saw last week with Kessie and Kumani, and she wants to know if Nias is as protective of Chera as Kumani is with Kessie. Um, I would say that Kumani is a helicopter mom. <laughs> um, Nias was a very different mom with Hestie than she is with Chera, uh, which has been really interesting to see. With Hesty, she would actually move Hesty until she was about five and a half on her back. Uh, Chera at two already moves on her own. So quite a difference between the first kid and the second kid. She's much more relaxed. Uh, Hesty actually helps out a lot. She does a lot of babysitting and playing with Chera. Um, so I, I, it's very different with Chera. She's much more easygoing with the second kid than she was with the first. Yes, yeah, she is. If you can tell, Lala, Nias is on the right. She's kind of moving over here to get a little closer to Chera, and Chera is kind of making a mess over in that corner, but they're separate, and mm -hmm. Nias does not have her arm around little Chera's breast. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a great question. Someone's wondering why the male's faces flatten. If you had seen Jaya earlier, um, he has more of like an oval shaped face, but Barani's is kind of like pancaked. <laughs> so there's two forms of adult males. Uh, the dominant male has the cheek pads and then uh, other males that are in that area are, they're called unflange or don't have cheek pads. Uh, they think it's a strategy. Uh, the cheek patterns tend to have more babies, whereas if you're living in an area where there's long periods of not having food, it's a lot better to be half the weight and size. Um, so you require less calories, less stress, um, easier to get around in the trees. So it's really, um, it's called a secondary sexual ca characteristic and that's what the girls are attracted to, but it comes at a cost. Oh, so Brawny would be the dominant male then. Of the force, yes. What age do they develop those? Um, it varies. There's a lot of theories. I don't really know for sure um, what triggers a male to be become the dominant male. Um, there's several theories. One is based on testosterone. They have more testosterone than the unflanged males. Um, some are younger, some are older. Um, the, usually if there's only one male around, he'll develop more quickly. Uh, if there's multiple males, it, it kind of delays them. <laughs> They're having a really fun time in there. Oh, there's chair behind the trash can. <laughs> Looks like a little, a little crazy. A little Sesame Street <laughs> back there. <laughs> it is too cute. I call her Oscar the Crush. No. Yes. <laughs> That's where she's going to go live now. <laughs> um, let's see what other questions. People are wondering what is the hay looking stuff in there. So it's actually um, wood that's been shredded. Uh, it makes fantastic nests for them. So every day we kind of mess up their old nests because 
daily they make new ones so we put new stuff in and then they take it and they make their bed for the night do chera and hesty get along oh they're best buds they're <laughs> constantly playing together um i've seen hesty uh comfort chera if chera got startled by something <laughs> um hesty will even go out and pick up chera and bring her inside if she's out there by herself so they she has learned so much and she'll be such a great mom when she gets older a reminder to anyone who's just tuning in you're just seeing one little part of this habitat that we have for our rings they have this whole outdoor space that's gorgeous large has so many structures they can climb and they really enjoy but they were out there a little bit earlier today <laughs> oh. and they are enjoying some indoor time away from this rainy, cold, dreary weather we're having here. Nate is seven. He just joined in. He wants to know the conservation status of this animal. Orangutans are critically endangered. Um, they're extremely endangered. So they need our help and it's very, their numbers are very low in the wild. So it's really important that we keep track of them and take care of them and do our part both as consumers and as zoos to help conserve the species. Oh, here's Barani. <laughs> so this is one of the benefits, um, you know, of, of not having guests the last few weeks is we've been really able to engage a lot closer with, with the animals and kind of enrich them. The keepers will eat lunch out here just to keep them company because they are certainly a group that misses misses the guests so there you go um Allie wants to know do we brush their hair which is a great question when we're looking at Hesty who has just the most fantastic little mop I've ever seen yeah she has <laughs> beautiful hair um we don't uh this is how they would look naturally um <laughs> we do for enrichment they'll give them combs every once in a while and that's always fun when you see them combing their hair or they'll comb their teeth with it. Are it's they big cute. groomers of each other? Is that really? something you'd find in a in a ring Not tan? With the ring of tans. It's actually pretty rare to see grooming. Um, they're, very, so silly, they're the most see. solitary of all the great apes. Uh, usually it's a mom and a kid or a previous child. Males and females only meet up uh, for breeding and then males don't tolerate each other at all. So um, there's it's not there's not a real need for grooming for them. <laughs> Marcella says, I miss them so much. Trust me, they miss you and we miss you and we can't wait for everyone to come back. <laughs> <laughs> How often are they kind of bipedal like that? Uh, not usually. I think the younger, more adolescent uh, orangutans tend to do it. So you'll see them doing a lot, but once they get older, they kind of stop doing that. <laughs> so now Nias is enjoying one of those blocks. Oh. She's trying to get her food up by kind of slamming it. Are orangutans known for being really intelligent using making and using tools? Oh, they're extremely, extremely intelligent. Um, uh, recently, like we have a little feeders that we put on our door and we call it a, a fishing pipe. So it's a PVC pipe and we'll put things inside and then give them a stick to use it to fish it out. And one of our orangutans was using the stick that had like three prongs and wasn't working very well and I said to him hey there's one right behind you that works better and he turned around <laughs> and looked saw it picked it up and started using that stick Ooh, Paulette has an interesting question she goes do the adults the older ones go gray like humans do uh, they actually do the really old ones get kind of lighter blonde and white around their mouth that I've seen very cool um, let's see uh, Rena is not by the window, so we won't go back over there. Oh, she, is. Oh, she oh, she heard her name. Yeah. <laughs> we have more requests for Irina, so we're coming back over here. <laughs> Everybody loves Irina. Yeah. Irina is very popular. <laughs> How old is Irina? Irina will be is is 12. She'll be 13 in December. <laughs> Hi, she says hello. Yes, we had special requests for you, Irina. <laughs> <laughs> She's the funniest, most fun, playful, goofy orangutan I've ever known. <laughs> Do you feel like you've had more time with being closed to kind of think of new enrichment ways and spend more time kind of socializing on this side of the glass with them? Yes. So we, we spend our lunch hour out in the lobby with them every day, um, which has been really fun because... 
They love playing with us and hanging out and they're goofy. Um, also just being here, we, we work uh, longer shifts right now and so it's been fun to be here for longer amounts and just hanging out and playing and making stuff for them. And we also, uh, with the gorillas not here right now, we've been able to utilize the whole building and so we do a lot of moving around in the building for them too. Yeah, how did the orangs react on this side of the habitat their first time in it? Jaya loves it. So he has really enjoyed this side. Nias does not want anything to do with it. I'm starting to wonder if she thinks the smell is still over here for gorillas. <laughs> so she, she's not too crazy about this side. But um, We have a question from Sarah. She's wondering why Irina isn't with the family group. So orangutans are um, one of the most solitary of the great ape species. Uh, they don't hang out with unrelated females often. So part of the problem with deforestation is that when they cut down an area of the forest, uh, a female is either displaced or she stays in that area and has no food. So she's displaced and she tries to move into a part of the forest that is still up it's usually with females that she's not related to and they will not let her have a territory. So the territories usually overlap with their children and other relatives. Um, so yeah, they're, they're not related. So she's in kind of her own space and she, yes. she's not alone. She has Jaya who's up there in the corner. He's kind oh, of moving oh, around. Yeah, there he is. He's peeking at us. You might be able to see his, let me try to zoom in there. Yep. That's Jaya. It's kind of hard to see from this from this angle, but he is a male. How old is Jaya? Jaya is also 12. They're actually two weeks apart in age, which is kind of neat. We'll go back over to the family group since Irina went behind the scenes. She had had enough. Um, Reagan is wondering how we can tell them apart. Uh, they each have a different face, so, um, and personality too. So, like, Hesty has the really beautiful hair and <laughs> Uh, Nias is a little bit um, darker in color uh, with her hair. It's a little more darker red. Um, so each, each one looks just a little bit different. It has a different personality. And once you get to know them, it's really easy to tell them apart. Yeah, and then obviously Chair is so little. So a lot of times I'll see people come in and they think Hesty is Chair's mom. <laughs> or they'll think Nias yes. is the dad. But no, once you see Barani, then it really puts into perspective who's who. Luke is wondering what training we do with them. Uh, most of the training we do is uh, for medical um, procedures. So right now we're having to be really careful. Like orangutans are susceptible to the flu. So we're assuming they're also susceptible to COVID-19. Uh, so one of the behaviors we do train is injections. So they do get their flu shot every year. They also get all the childhood vaccines uh, that your kid would get, like MMR and um, what is it, DTaP and um, a few other ones. That, pneumococcal, I think, was another one we gave. Um, so they're susceptible to that stuff. So we do vaccinate them and uh, we just teach them to give them their shoulders and we give the vaccine. We've also taught them to do ultrasounds. So. For example, when Nias was pregnant with Chera, we were able to check on the pregnancy and make sure everything was healthy and going well. Um, there's a few orangutans uh, that have had to have C-sections, and so our ultrasound images, were a we were able to help um, those other facilities know when a baby is at the end of the term by providing measurements to the study. So most of our behaviors are medical. Yeah, and Delena's wondering who is the most personable out of I, all six. Irina, oh, yeah. by far, <laughs> there's no question. It is a consensus in here among the keepers that Irina is the most personable. Sadie's wondering what treat was in those blocks that they were trying to get. Uh, it was applesauce. Frozen? Frozen applesauce, yeah. Frozen applesauce, maybe kids would like that as sort of like mm -hmm. a popsicle. Yeah. <laughs> Our rings definitely love it. Um, let's. <laughs> Sisters are gonna. Oh, here it comes. And what's in that bottle? Uh, that's the frozen juice. Oh, for, I think Hesty really is like a favorite. Those mm -hmm. are her favorite oh, she's of hers. the most beautiful one <laughs> out of all of them. <laughs> but I always see her with the bottles of frozen yeah. treats. I think that's like. Yeah, she, she's like, those are mine. Um, let's see. 
Um, oh, Lala's asking if they can recognize faces. Oh, they sure can. Um, and they have their favorite people too. So like when I was on maternity leave, Nias was really upset that I was gone. Oh. So I'd bring the baby by for her to see and she'd only come look at the baby if I turned my back because she didn't want to look at me. Oh, <laughs> she was mad at yeah. you? Oh my gosh. Mindy's wondering if we read stories to them as enrichment like we did for Admiral our crowned crane. Oh, that's something I've never thought of doing that's a good idea might have to try that we do a lot of we play the radio and we have played videos on TV for them and we hang out with them but I haven't actually tried reading books that's a good idea we have an awesome video on our YouTube of the Colorado Symphony playing for our orangutans they really seem to enjoy that uh, Jen's wondering what sounds and vocalizations they make they have over 30 different vocalizations um, they have a, kind of a happy sound. They have a scared sound. Uh, males produce, it's called the long call. So in one way, when the dominant male, only dominant males make that vocalization. So they let the other males know they're there and they also let the females know they're there. So usually if a female's interested, she'll go towards that sound, whereas all the unflanged males will run away from the sound. <laughs> Uh, Ray's wondering, do they sleep through the night like humans, or do they sleep in short spurts? So orangutans are diurnal, so that means that they're awake during the day. Uh, a lot of times if people have come for functions here in the evenings, they have a strict bedtime. Usually at 5 o'clock, they've made their nest, they are ready to go to bed, and they go to sleep. But if anybody um, else like me who loves naps, they do take naps too during the day. and. Um, <laughs> When I saw wild orangutans in Indonesia, they um, they were taking naps midday there too. <laughs> so, Barani's been hanging out by the door. Hesty's joining him now. She's trying to steal his treat. Yes, she. <laughs> yes, she is. Sometimes they like to hang out by the door because they think a keeper might walk by, give them an extra treat, say hello. Oh, Pam says she volunteers to read to them. We appreciate that, Pam. <laughs> um, we'll take a few more questions from anyone who has them about the orangutans. But as a reminder, this is Endangered Species Week. We're honoring here at Denver Zoo. So every day this week during our virtual safaris, we're going to talk about a species that really needs our help and how you can help them from home. So we're so glad you all are joining us. Thank you to everyone who's donated. Chara is just being the cutest and we know you all cannot wait to get back and see them and see Chara specifically. She's just so cute. She's gotten so big since that first time she came out here on Nias's back. So we really appreciate it. Hi Amber, you miss all the animals. We definitely understand that. We're so lucky we get to come in and see them, um, but we know, we know you all miss them. Oh, let's okay. We're going to say hi to Jaya. I think that's a great note to end on. This is Jaya, our male orang and our companion for Irina. <laughs> Irina's gonna say, yep, this is, this is my friend Jaya. Um, so you can tell he does not have those cheek flaps. Is that because he's not old enough or he's not dominant? He's not dominant. He is not dominant, so he'll he probably never get them? He's also still a little young. Um, it's more in the teens that they would get them even at the younger end, um, but they, he will get them eventually. It just will take a lot longer, probably till his late teens, early 20s. All right. So, hi Porter, we don't have a date when we're gonna reopen, but we are working really hard to try to get everything in place to make sure that it's a safe reopening for our guests, animals, and our staff. So thank you all so much. <laughs> On behalf of Irina, Jaya, Barani, Nias, Hesti, Chara, Cindy, and Tenley, we thank you all so much for watching, and we will be back tomorrow.